<laughs> Hello, Olda Nation, family and friends. It is a wonderful day. It is a beautiful sunny day. Mm -hmm. A little chilly, but it's perfectly fine yeah, here on Wednesday. Lovely. And um, and we actually have a special guest in the church, too. Ayanna James is here with us. Yay, yay, yay Ayanna. So, uh, so we're going to read Noonday Prayers, and um, we'll begin on page 103 in the Book of Common Prayer. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. Be forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. And our psalm for today is Psalm 9, verses 1 through 11. And if you're in your prayer book, that's on page 593. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing to your name, O Most High. When my enemies are driven back. They will stumble and perish at your presence. For you have maintained my right and my cause. You sit upon your throne, judging right. You have rebuked the ungodly and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. As for the enemy, they are finished in perpetual ruin. Their cities plowed under, the memory of them perished. But the Lord is enthroned forever. He has set up his throne for judgment. It is he who rules the world with righteousness. He judges the people with equity. The Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed. A refuge in time of trouble. Those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you never forsake those who seek you, O Lord. Sing praise to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Proclaim to the peoples the things he has done. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father and, and to the Son and, and to the Holy Spirit. Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Our reading today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13. In those days, after the suffering of that time, the sun will become dark and the moon won't give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the planets and other heavenly bodies will be shaken. Then they will see the human one coming in the clouds with great power and splendor. Then he will send the angels and gather together his chosen people from the four corners of the earth, from the end of the earth to the end of heaven. Learn this parable from the fig tree. After its branch becomes tender and it sprouts new leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, you know that he's near at the door. I assure you that this generation won't pass away until all these things happen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will certainly not pass away. But nobody knows when that day or hour will come, not the angels in heaven and not the Son. Only the Father knows. Watch out. Stay alert. You don't know when the time is coming. It is as if someone took a trip, left the household behind, and put the servants in charge, giving each one a job to do, and told the doorkeeper to stay alert. Therefore, stay alert. You don't know when the head of the household will come, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows in the early morning or at daybreak. Don't let him show up when you weren't expecting and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, stay alert. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Uh, we're continuing to read these um, meditations for the season of Advent. And this particular scripture that you just read, Ashley, is one that's part of what we read last Sunday as we began uh, the season of Advent. And, and the writing tells us, during Advent, we hear passages of scripture that are infused with language of darkness, tribulation, and apocalypse. Matthew, Mark, and Luke each have one fully apoc apocalyptic chapter. In Mark 13, we just heard Jesus say, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. 
the passage only gets darker as it goes. In those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Why in this season is Jesus talking like this about death and destruction instead of talking about sheep and shepherds and heavenly hosts? In Scripture, apocalyptic writing comes out of catastrophe. The Israelites were a favored people. God promised them a future of safety and prosperity. But then they were conquered and forced into exile in the Babylonian Empire. Humanly speaking, there was no hope. When the Israelites found themselves in crisis, it was a theological emergency. It was out of this emergency that a new apocalyptic way of thinking takes shape. It started with the second half of Isaiah, chapters 40 and on, written during the Babylonian captivity when everything seemed so hopeless and it blossomed from there. By the time of Jesus, apocalyptic language was everywhere. Apocalyptic theology is, above all, theology of hope. And hope is the polar opposite of optimism. Optimism always fails when it is swallowed up in darkness. By contrast, hope is found in something beyond human history. It's found in the incarnate God. In Luke's gospel, when Jesus speaks apocalyptically of signs in the sun and moons and stars and the distress of nations, he ends by saying, Humanity will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And he's speaking about the second coming. He's telling us that great hope comes not through our human development or agency, but through himself. He possesses sovereign power that is independent of human history. In spite of the apparent darkness, God in Christ is shaping our history in accordance with divine purposes. Advent tells us to look directly into the darkness and name it for what it is. But this is not the end of the story. Jesus said, look up, raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. And what a wonderful word for us today, because in many ways this year, and everyone's life in some way, shape, is in a period of darkness and without optimism. Right. And yet, Advent, as we prepare for Christmas, is truly a season of hope, knowing that in the darkest of times, we can give all our hope that God promises the sun will rise again and there will be days of light. So thank you for this wonderful meditation, and, uh, and it will be emailed out to you this afternoon as part of your meditations. So, amen. amen. We'll continue with our prayers. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art Lord in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. bread. And, and forgive, forgive us our, our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church. 
and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I now invite your prayers and thanksgivings silently, aloud, or by typing into Facebook. Yes, and on the Old Nation prayer list this morning or afternoon now, um, first of all, I want to offer prayers for Denise Wilkinson and her family as they mourn the loss of her mother who died just this morning. And so we pray for Gladys Pachta, for God to continue to care for her and provide her the home that is promised in heaven and for the reunion with Denise's father. And we pray for their family as they grieve and make their plans. We pray also for Diana Skipper, George Butler, who is in Beach General this day, uh, going through tests for pneumonia that we talked about yesterday. For Alan Joyce, Brenda Walker, for Brian Hunt and Heather Hang Hunt, for Buddy Fremd, for Joe Beach, who is having surgery today, for Katie Dombey and their family, for Kevin and Vicki Kors, for Larry and Margie Dullahan, Savannah Hernandez, Ovidio and Marlene Andrade, both recovering from COVID, Michael Hicks recovering from COVID, Brian Miller, Betty Munden, Warren Flott, Greg Johnson, Karen Londere, Meredith Guzman, Pam Painter, Julius Ventura, Howard Hanchy, Forrest Newhall, Linda Erickson, Amy, Pam, Philip, Ruth, Ruth Ann, Donna, Jan and her mother Steffi, Carol, Bill, Joe, Martha, Frank, Kelly, Gabe, and Gio, Alan and Carol Ormond, students in school and their teachers and parents, for victims of racial injustice and an end of violence in our land, for God's vision of a beloved community to become our vision for this nation and this world, for peace in the nation and in the world, and especially for those who are fighting on the front lines against COVID, for deployed personnel all around the world, for scientists working on the vaccine development and the distribution plans, and for all those others who are in any need or trouble at this time. And we also have some celebrations. I know we have a couple birthdays. We do. A happy birthday to Laura Hicks and Sharon Tanner. And, um, and no anniversaries today. So it's all about you today, Laura and Sharon. Happy, happy birthday. May God bless you and keep you now and always. Amen on that. Amen. That is wonderful. Well, um, other than that, we need your videos with singing some Christmas carols yes. and your children dressed up as whatever kind of animal we need for the pageant. And angels, and yep. It, it could even be dinosaurs. I, I know we've got dinosaurs <laughs> in this pageant. So uh, so any kind of animal is, uh, is always welcomed. And um, other than that, we will say our prayers. That's right. And uh, keep on preparing our hearts for Christmas. Yep. So let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. We'll see you tomorrow. Yeah.